Thank you, my God, that you rule over the affairs of men. I thank you, Lord, your watchful eyes are over your children. Lord, as we exalt thee today, Lord God, I thank you that your presence and the power of your spirit is upon our lives. We thank you, my God, that you're raining down blessings, Father, that you're touching each and every one of your children. I thank you, God, as we sow to heaven, so we reap on earth. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you, you are the God of all help. I thank you that you're helping each and every one of us in our situation, in our circumstances, in our problems, in our challenges, whatever we are going through. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are with us. You are not in heaven, but you come down to be with the children of man, with the sons and daughters of God. And your name is the helper, and we thank you for your help. We receive your help. We declare that you're helping already. I thank you that you're in our life. You're helping us already. You're empowering us already. You're not uh, 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 empowering us already. We thank you, my God. We praise your name. We glorify your name. We bless your holy name, Lord. I thank you all is well with us. There may be trouble in the world, but uh, the presence of God is in the church. And I thank you, Lord, that your presence is watching over us. Your presence is ministering to us. Your presence is strengthening us. We thank you, God. Lord, we thank you that we are strong and able and powerful in the presence of the Lord. I thank you, Lord. Yeah, the empowering spirit. Lord, empowerment is our inheritance. Empowerment is our heritage. Empowerment belongs to the children of God. And I thank you this morning as we worship you, as we lift up your name, as we glorify your name. I thank you that very empowerment is flowing into us. Out of our bellies are flowing rivers of living water. Out of our bellies are flowing rivers of healing water. I thank you that we are being healed. We are being restored. We are being made whole. Lord, we can't be in your presence and not be changed. And I thank you, Lord, that you're changing us, that you're transforming us, you're empowering us. Lord, not really us, our children and our children's children, our children and our children's children, and our children and our children's children, and our children and our children's children. Lord, is under your tender care. Lord, you bless the seed of the righteous. The seed of the righteous is blessed, the word of God says. The seed of the righteous is blessed. The seed of the righteous, not just the righteous. Lord, we declare that the seed of the righteous, we claim our seeds, Lord. We bring our seeds to you. We declare our children belong to you. We believe in God for restoration and miracle in their life. That they're coming back to the Lord. That they're coming back from their blood. blood. They're having an encountering with Jesus. We thank you, my God. We thank you that you care about our children and our children's children, Lord. We bless your holy name. We belong to you, Lord. And we are the household of faith. And this morning, my God, we thank you that your presence, Lord, your sweet presence, your presence, your presence, whether we feel it or we don't feel it, Lord, we thank you that your presence is here. We is here, Lord. For you said where two or three are gathered in your name, where two or three come to worship you, where three are gathered to come to look into your face, you are here, you do not turn us back. And then you bless us abundantly. And therefore, Lord, this morning I speak your blessing. I blessing I speak your blessing over the people of God, over the children. I pray and I declare that they are blessed. Bless in the name of the Lord. I bless you all in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Yeshua. We bless you. We bless you. Receive the blessing. Lift up your hands and receive the blessing. Receive the blessing. Just say, Lord, I thank you that you're blessing me. You receive it. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're blessing me. You're blessing me this morning. This morning, we receive your blessing. This morning, Lord, this morning. Not in the afternoon, this morning. I thank you in your presence, there's fullness of joy. Fullness of the blessing in the presence of the Lord. This morning we receive that blessing. And we declare we change from faith to faith, strength to strength, and glory to glory. All things is well with our soul. All things is well with our soul. All things is well. Because our God is with us. And he is fighting the battle. We pray to you thank you. And we give you all the glory. Let's give the Lord a clap offering this morning. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody sitting on your right or on your left and just greet them in the name of the Lord. Say hello to somebody. Exodus chapter 12, 7 and uh, yeah, the word is the word is application. So take a note of the word application. So here it says that uh, and you shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house wherein thou shalt eat it. And they shall eat 
the flesh in that night roasted with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs that they shall eat it. Okay, so I just want to, I just want to talk about the first one, that it shall take the blood and you shall apply it on the lintels and the doorposts of the house. Amen. So the, the children of Israel were in Egypt and uh, uh, it, it, the, the night before the Passover and the Lord uh, gives them an instruction. Instructions are to be obeyed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the instruction was uh, that shall kill a lamb and uh, he shall eat the lamb that talks about the body of Jesus, uh, uh, partaking of the body of Jesus. But it says, take the blood and apply the blood to the lentils and the doorposts of the house wherein they're staying. And uh, when on the Passover night, uh, the angel of death passed through the land. And as he passed through the land, wherever he saw the blood on the household, it passes by, it couldn't go in. Amen? It couldn't go in. But the important thing I want to say to you is that apply the blood. So the, the blood was there. So why I'm saying this is that as Christians, we know about the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. It's not what you know about the blood. It's whether you apply the blood. Amen. Application. Amen. Sometimes we don't apply it. Sometimes we take it for granted. Amen? Amen. You know, sometimes we can do that. Uh, but here the Bible says that, uh, uh, that the children of Israel were commanded to apply the blood of Jesus Christ. They're commanded to apply the blood of Jesus Christ. And as they applied the night, uh, on the night where, uh, on the eve of their departure from Egypt, uh, the, the angel of death passed through and uh, they were saved, they were redeemed. Amen. Yes. Uh, so here is uh, knowledge and application. Knowledge and, and you know every time there's a move of God, there's always the song about, oh, the blood of Jesus. Remember that? Yes. We used to sing that song. Yes. Amen. So when the Spirit of God begins to move, the Spirit of God always glorifies the blood of Jesus. The Spirit of God cannot do anything without the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus has opened the, day, the door for us into the presence of God. We come into the Holy of Holies with boldness. It's all because what Jesus did. What, so the blood has to precede the Spirit of God even. Amen? So until Jesus died and rose, even the Holy Spirit cannot come to earth and reside in the hearts of men. You know, the blood has to be shed first. And, uh, but the most important application that I see here is that he says, apply it. Yeah. Apply it. You know, sometimes we hear about it, we read about it, we know about it, but we don't apply it. Amen? Yeah. And when we apply it, there's power in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's victory in the blood of Jesus. Yeah. There's healing in the blood of Jesus. There's redemption in the blood of Jesus. There's salvation in the blood of Jesus. And we overcome... Right at the end of the book it writes, and we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the testimony. Hallelujah. At the end of the book, that's what it says. Amen. And God honors the blood. Why I'm saying that sometimes in churches these days, you know, they don't want to use the blood because it's not kosher anymore. Hallelujah. They think it's very offensive. They think that people are offended, you know, blood and you know. so we you know, even though they their doctrine may say it, but they are ashamed of it. Amen? Never be ashamed of the blood of Jesus. But we much more honor the blood of Jesus. Because it's the blood. Hallelujah. Blood. It's the blood. Even the blood that speaks for you. And, and I want to say this. If, uh, if we do not honor the blood of Jesus, then the blood of Jesus Christ does not speak for you. Amen? You are in trouble. Hi. In trouble. The only thing that speaks for you is the blood of Jesus. Jesus, his blood. You know, the blood speaks. Hallelujah. In the book, uh, Genesis, the blood of a Abel spoke. Hallelujah. The blood has got a voice. Amen. <laughs> the blood of Jesus Christ has got a voice. And the blood of Jesus Christ will speak for you. Hallelujah. When we honor it and we apply it and look to it with faith. Amen. So they do, they kind of uh, minister physical blood, that uh, but we uh, know that the blood of, we apply the blood by faith, amen, amen. by faith, and, and saying, Lord, I thank you for the blood, I thank you, Lord. Everything is through the blood, Hallelujah. Everything, everything's by the blood of Jesus. 
and the Father owns the blood. Amen. And even Jesus says, because of my blood. Amen. Yes. Do good to them because of my blood. Not their blood, but my blood. Hallelujah. Yes. Blood represents life. Because my sacrifice, my surrender, my death. Amen. Amen. I paid the price. So bless them because of my blood. Hallelujah. Yes. And it's a very powerful tool. Amen. Amen. Powerful tool also against the enemy. Amen. Remember those times when 1970s when revival took place and we used to sing the blood of Jesus and come against the devil in the blood of Jesus. You know, the blood of Jesus, the devil goes screaming out. Amen. It, it can't stay and it can't resist the blood of Jesus. Amen. It goes out screaming because there's power in the blood. Hallelujah. But, but the word that I want to bring to you is the application. Because why I'm saying application, we all tend to forget. After a while, we all take it for granted. After a while, what is holy becomes common. Amen? What is potent becomes powerless. After a while, you know, it becomes a, a ritual. And it's a ritual, you just do it. Amen? But you do that. This morning, what we're going to do is to exercise faith and apply the blood. Hallelujah, do both. Amen? Exercise faith. That is, stir yourself up, exercise and apply the blood. Speak it. Amen. And I want you to speak it to whatever you need to speak over your health, over your body, over your family, over your children, over your house, over your finance, over your whatever it is. Amen. So that the, the destroyer would pass by you and not, you know, uh, come to you. Amen. He'll pass by you. That's the power of the blood. But it's in application. Amen. Not knowing but in every, can all of us stand to our feet right now? And every one of them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we just are uh, going to listen to this speaker. He's none other than Reverend Amos. Hallelujah. Uh, for those of you who do not know Reverend Amos, I don't know Reverend Amos. For those of you who do not know, I'm already sweating. <laughs> uh, fire is getting on on me. Uh, Reverend Amos uh, is a prophet of God. Uh, he's prophesied over the last four presidents of Indonesia. Hallelujah. He got access to the palaces of Indonesia and, uh, and uh, they, they seek him for his counsel. And he's prophesied over many, many people all over the world. Uh, he's a true prophet of God. and uh, uh, he, 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 he comes to our church regularly, but since COVID has been shut down, he has not been able to come. I invited him, he said, I can't come. He's stuck in Singapore, by the way, at the moment. He can't travel out of Singapore either. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody's ministry is now online. Nah? So I said that we've been waiting for him to come. He couldn't come. So I just asked him, you know, just to, to, to share and preach to us online. Amen. And I just want you all to, to listen to him. Uh, he knows about me, he knows about church, about our church has been there. And we used to have the prophetic conference. Uh, he used to be the uh, key, keynote speaker. And uh, today I just uh, pray to him. I, I just ask the Lord to, to, to put on his heart to share with us a message that we need to hear. Hallelujah. And uh, so we are going to listen to him. His name is Amos Jeratnam. He's from Singapore. But his sons are here in Brisbane. Uh, he can't be with his children either. Amen. He won, and his grandchildren too now. And uh, but uh, he's a he's a mighty man of God. And uh, uh, so just want y'all to uh, open your ears and listen and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you through him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He can speak, but you need to hear what the Holy Spirit wants to say to you. Just say that, Father. I just pray even as uh, Reverend Amos come on the line. Lord, that you will speak to him, speak through him, Lord, and it'll touch our hearts. And Lord, that you'll open up deaf ears and blind eyes, Lord, spiritual deaf ears and blind eyes, that we may hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Ours is a prophetic church, and he's a prophet, and he knows the calling thing of our church. And uh, I just want to say, as a, as a prophetic church, there are two things that we do. We take care of the sheep, we nurture the sheep, and... And, and also as a part of the prophetic call is to, to prophesy and to declare what God. We do a lot of that in our prayer meetings daily. Amen. That's where it all happens in the prayer meeting. Amen. My prophecies all come in the prayer meeting. 
And I like it to come in the prayer meeting, in the heat of heat of prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. I like it. And, and uh, so we declare the word of the Lord, whether it's for the nation or different situation. And uh, uh, we believe that God will use us even more powerfully in that way in the days to come. Amen. Okay, let's listen to Reverend Amos. Greetings in Jesus' name. It's a great joy to share God's word to Post Life Church, Prophetic Church. Um, thank you to Prophet uh, Patrick Chandran and Leah Chandran for inviting me to speak. It's been a long time I've missed your church. We have great times together, prophetic conferences. And I believe even now God has set uh, your leader prophetic prof, prophet set him apart for the work of the ministry so greetings to all of you uh, great work you are doing um, what I sense in my heart is uh, for the uh, a word for the coastal life prophetic church it is inevitable for us to know that your church is a prophetic church your set man is a prophet uh, a good shepherd and a great revelatory prophetic preacher. His greater anointing is being in the office of a prophet. So don't change him to be a teacher or evangelist or a pastor. Of course, he have a pastor side, but his greater call is the prophet. And especially during this time, God is raising prophetic companies. God is raising prophetic churches. If you study the early church, uh, they were very prophetic. The very ch the church was born with a prophecy given by prophet Joel, that God will pour his spirit upon all flesh. Uh, the old man can see vision, dreams. And God will speak through a dream and the young will see visions. God will speak through a vision and uh, sons and daughters will prophesy god will speak through prophecies in other words the holy spirit will come in and indwell in us and give us the power the anointing the chief prophet is the holy spirit and he's inside us and uh, true enough acts chapter 1 verse 8 when the holy spirit comes upon you you receive power to get a house to get the right man for your life to get a land to get a good job to get healed all these things will come but the holy spirit came upon you to empower you to be witnesses this is the first call for every christian to be witnesses and god gives us different talents but basically our life become a testimony sharing the good news sharing our testimonies people get impacted and moving in the power of the holy spirit the same holy spirit everybody has everybody is the temple of god Everybody is washed by the blood of Jesus. Everybody is a royal priest. Every believer is a royal priest. The Bible says these are the signs of a believer. They will cast out demons. They lay hands on the sick. Ask one and another whether you're doing it. You have that calling. You have the gift. When the Holy Spirit came into us, He came with the full divine nature of God and the full divine power of God. It's up to us was to build into his nature as well as built into his power there are nine fruits and nine gifts that's how the holy spirit comes into us and as we lubricate these gifts especially in these end times the persecution is going to increase not only COVID 19 but other things will continue to happen but we need to be prepared to overcome and and god is raising prophetic church church that can hear the voice of god Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Upon this prophetic revelation, because he's the head of the church. So prophetic revelation, God speaking to the church and the body rising. And even Ephesians 2.20 says that the church of Jesus Christ was built upon prophets and apostles, with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. In other words, in simple terms, God speaks prophetically to the church, vision, mission, everything. And then the architect is the apostle who then now builds it. 
step by step, structure it, raise people, impart the vision, influence them, and they carry the vision and extend God's kingdom. So the church is built upon the prophetic, uh, where we can hear the voice of God. And so I believe God is reviving the church back its to its early. So many uh, truths have been uh, restored. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, born again experience, the nine gifts of the Spirit, and then the revelation of the uh, Church of Jesus Christ, and then give the gifts of uh, the gifts, the charismatic movement, the nine gifts. God is restoring truth after truth, and now the church is going to be equipped, not only uh, prophetically but supernaturally moving. So in this time of persecution. The only way that the church will rise and be fruitful is through persecution. And I want to read, uh, 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 of course, in Malachi chapter 4, Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, it says that in the before the dreadful day, the, in the last days or the dreadful time, that means before the coming of the Lord, before all these curses, all the wrath of God flowing because of an increase of sin. He is going to send Elijah. And Elijah is going to turn the fathers to the son and sons to the father. Which means in this time when, when John the Baptist was there, Jesus said Elijah is here. Basically, Jesus was talking about Elijah's ministry, John's ministry. John the Baptist ministry was preparing the way for the king to come, the king to rule in his kingdom, Jesus Christ. Similarly, also, Elijah was preparing the people to meet God. So in the last days, when the prophet says Elijah is coming, this time it's going to be corporate anointing, two way company of prophets rising to prepare the people for the greater harvest and the coming of the Lord, and also the church rising as a prophetic church with the Elijah's anointing. And it's not going to be focused on systems or structures or, or, or all this are necessary, are definitely necessary. But more than that is covenant relationship, father-son relationship, where people carry the father's anointing father's vision and your father is prophet Patrick Chandra given a prophetic call and a prophetic mission uh, for this person. so that means it will not only be a blessing to this this region but uh, Australia and beyond and uh, Matthew chapter 24 verse 7 talks about pestilences war famines so COVID was already prophesied that when sin increases in the last days, the wrath of God will flow and appear like pestilences, uh, famines, earthquakes, uh, wars, all these are already happening and it only get worse. What we need to do, the only way is as it gets worse, as the persecution comes, the church have to be united together as a team, as a body of Christ, and rise with power and hear God prophetically because you're not going to hear good news. So you need to have good news from the Lord, clear direction from the Lord so that we will rise up. Your church is a prophetic watch tower in, in your region and Australia and beyond. So, which means that God is going to raise many prophetic intercessors. Prophetic means they can hear God. They pray prophetically. They have a list of what to pray for. That's natural information. But as they pray by groaning in the spirit and plus information coming revealed by the Holy Spirit. And you pray prophetically in line with what the spirit is saying. And there God will raise many. Some of you are already there. And some will be raised within the church. And some will be led by the Holy Spirit from other churches to come and join. Why? Because they are called to be part of this prophetic church. This church is going to grow with, uh, whether you like it or not, it's a prophetic church. 
But if you are not open to this vision, and you cannot, cannot catch this vision, and you have a different vision, either you change and, and know that God has brought you here, so we are understand the vision of your leader, and catch it in the spirit and prepare yourself. Because what God is saying is, whilst your leader is a prophet, there are other areas of ministries, caring ministry, children ministry, evangelistic ministry, teaching ministry, uh, administration, all the other talents and gifts are coming from all of you. There are many talented people here. Uh, what we are doing, we need to change our ways to Matthew 6.33. This is persecution time. This is going last days. You cannot be saying, I want my farm to be okay. I want my, uh, my children to go to school. And I want my husband to get a good job. And uh, I want more finances. All that the world also asks for. Everybody asks for. But the center of every believer must be kingdom. I'm part of the kingdom. I've been bought with the blood of Jesus. I don't belong to myself. I belong to Jesus. I never plan to come to this world. Therefore, I have to plan with the Holy Spirit. And what Holy Spirit call plan is everybody has to give. Everybody serving under one big vision and covering. You cannot say, oh, I just come to church. I pay my tithes. I give the offering and I say hi to pastor and his wife. And, you know, when I'm sick, I'll call him. When I need help, I call him. What about the kingdom? You have been purchased by the blood of Jesus, given the keys of the kingdom to establish his kingdom. And the king is going to come and rule. And he's going to take care of you. He's going to provide for you for eternity. Hello. We have a call. Everyone. The, the call of God is everyone. Everyone is called. You can turn around to your friend and say, you are called. Because you are called in the kingdom of darkness, in the kingdom of light. The word church ecclesia in greek it means the call out ones everybody's called the year i have to do the year 24 hours you're here you can be a doctor but in your medical practice you're more than a doctor you not only excel as a doctor but you have the call of god to be in the medical practice to be a like that your pastor cannot be in the in the hospital but you are there he can come and pray for the sick but you are the doctor there and you shine. You do it God's way. You do it. You don't follow the world's way. You follow God's way. Amen. So I believe that there's a high calling in this church. So get ready to think outside of the normal. You cannot say, oh, how come our church is not like their church? Every church has its different calling and different. But yours is a prophetic church. And you need to embrace it. There's a strong apostolic grace also in your church. So structure, system, everything must be according to the wine scheme, the prophetic wine scheme. The Lord will bring change. We don't want to copy others. We want to learn from others, but we want to apply it in the way that God has built our church. Start thinking from kingdom perspective. So get used, get used to prophesying, get used to visions, get used to dreams, miracles, prophetic acts, declarations prophetic declarations for declarations prophetic degree moving in the supernatural angelic visitations and supernatural encounters get ready get ready your church is going to be a sign church it has got nothing to do with how big it is jesus had 12 all the way three and a half years one fail but that didn't that that didn't shook him because that 12 that 11 they added one more. They shook the world. In 200 years, they shook the whole world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, so you are not part, if you are not part of this movement, this call, it means you are not part of this movement, you may become a stumbling block. You, if you're not part of this prophetic, you're not part of this uh, vision and mission, you don't embrace this vision, mission. You're, you're a prophetic watchtower, prophetic power, voice of the nation. And of course, we need the sound system, we need the Sunday school, we, 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 we need the administration, we need the worship team, 
prophetic worship and the musicians, everyone are all focused on the vision of the church. It's a teamwork. You may not prophesy as accurate as your pastor, but you belong to a prophetic church. You belong to a prophetic vision. And you have a role to play in your church. Let me read the text for today because I believe that God is raising a prophetic team. And that's the title. God is raising a prophetic team. Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17, verse 8 to 16. Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us some men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Ur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavier. So they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it. And Aaron and Ur supported his arms, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this for a memorial in the book, and recount it in the hearing of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called its name, The Lord is my banner. For he said, because of the Lord has sworn, the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Here we see that Moses has taken the people out of Egypt. And they're all coming into the promised land. They are all walking out. They are tired. They are worn out. Satan will come at a time. And, you know, maybe the size is dwindling or finance is going down or someone left or or, or difficult situation, uh, that's the time we need to be alert because Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy, whether it's individual life, family, business, or church. Uh, so we, they were all tired. And uh, uh, this is the first war recorded in the Bible when they left Egypt, as the first war. And you see the Amalekites come from behind, from behind. And, 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 Amalek, you must find out what is Amalek. Historically, Amalek, uh, if you remember, Isaac had two sons, Jacob and Esau. Esau is supposed to get the uh, birthright. He sold his birthright. And so when uh, uh, Jacob, the second brother, he got the birthright instead of Esau. So Esau was so bitter, so bitter, that he decided to kill Jacob after he found his father dies. And he also went against the father and got involved with the Canaanite woman because father is instructed, don't have anything to do with that. Woman. And he went to marry a Canaanite woman and out of that came Amalek. So Amalek carried the bitterness of Esau to kill Jacob, Israel, the Israelites. So the spirit was there. God saw that in this tribe. And that is why in 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 1, God instructed King Saul to utterly destroy the Amalekites. They are symbolic of Satan. They come to still kill and destroy. So we need to understand that. So here, the only way to defeat the enemy is teamwork. You can see that Joshua has taken instruction from Moses and is out there in the field. He is a very important person. Plus all the soldiers, all, all together, they're all fighting the enemy. And then whereas uh, Moses goes up the presence of God into prayer and uh, Ur, and, uh, Ur is a goldsmith, a marketplace man, Aaron from the priests, or you can say all the elders, the full-time workers are missionaries. And then here, 
marketplace people within the church, lifting up the hands of the prophet, lifting up the apostle uh, Moses' hand. And he was so tight, sat down, and they continue until the sun went down. Until so every time his hand went down, Joshua was losing. Can you imagine what is God trying to speak to our church today? I feel it's very prophetic. He's saying that you want to see this church. You cannot point at the pastor or the elder or someone or, 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 or say, oh, because he's doing this work. That's why we are in trouble. No, it's because you did not catch the vision and you did not play your role because when Ur and Aaron were holding the hand up, he was faithful. Moses has made so many sacrifices to come here all the way, risked his life and spoke to uh, Pharaoh to take my people must go and worship the Lord and they are, they are a nation of their own. And so he lifted up the rod of God before the Lord, lifting up his hand, praying, moving in the spirit, pro prophesying, releasing the prophecy. But we need the marketplace people and we need the elders, the, the leaders, the spiritual leaders, the workers, all lifting up together and then you will see our missionaries out there our workers out there our evangelists out there doing very well it's a teamwork my dear brothers and sisters let me read first corinthians chapter 12 verse 21 and 22 and the eye cannot say to the hand i have no need of you nor again the head to their feet you know i let's say the feet says i've been always facing the ground Give me a chance to be the eye. Can you imagine you take the feet and put it in the eye? So ugly, so not proportionate, not, not functioning. Because the feet's function and the eye function is different. So each of us need to uh, identify our role. For start, we do everything, anything that we can because we love the Lord. But slowly, pastor will begin to see, your leader will begin and others will begin to see it. The gifting that you have, the skill that you have, the talent that you have. I mean, you if you want to be a worship leader and if your voice is not tuned up, then you are not able to lead the people in worship. But you may have other uh, skill in watching the toilet, cleaning, doing some plumbing work, repair, and you're good. And that's spiritual in the eyes of God because you're serving in the kingdom, in the talent and the skill that you have so that everything works, the whole body works well that's why it says not no much rather than those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary in other words even the the the, the small intestine or whatever that it's not seen can you imagine the intestine says oh uh, you know i'm not outside i'm inside uh, can i be around the neck so you take the intestine and put on the neck the person will die of food not being digested and going the body because the role of the small intestines is to take the digestive food and take that and suck in into blood into the body so every part of the body can you imagine if you say i just come to church give my thighs hi to the pastor now and then when i'm free when i'm free hello he spilled all his blood and bought you over from hell and gave you new life and a ticket to heaven. And he's going to give, I mean, he has saved you. You become the child of God. You become the temple of God. He spilled every drop of blood. And you say, I, I'm not part-time, I'm part-time. No, each of us same. Same Holy Spirit, same blood. Everybody has a responsibility and a call. A team is a group of people who share common objectives and who need to work together to achieve them. So we all need to catch our, our church calling and vision. And then we work together and then to achieve it. Three important aspects of working uh, of, uh, of, uh, for working together. Number one is the objective, the vision, the mission of the church we need to have a clear vision like our church is called to be prophetic church and committed to mission to raise to raise a, 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 a prophetic community uh, 
uh, and committed to missions. Very simple statement, but it's very clear. Everyone knows. And now I'm not pastoring the church. We have another senior pastor who grew under me, like my Timothy is. He's taking over the church. He's apostolic. He is prophetic. All our churches in Malaysia, everywhere, most of our uh, pastors who are under us, directly under us, they're prophetic because it's the same vision that grew in me and flow into them like the anointing from Aaron beard went down all the way similarly. If we'd have another vision, another call, then probably you're not part of this movement. So a healthy team is where we have a set man, the man with the vision and call, each person with a role and function that will complement each other to fulfill the vision. And to also, so in our church, uh, 40 years I've been in the ministry. So uh, our ministries have grown everywhere. And, and in, in this church, in this mother church, we have a senior pastor, we have a prophet, we have a, a one who's totally committed to missions and he coordinates all our missions. Then we have uh, lady pastors, lady teachers, they all pastors. We have seven pastors in the church. Not everybody is receiving an income, but some are working ministers, but they're all ordained as pastors. And then we have elders and then we have deacons and everybody doing different, different responsibility according to their call. We have a missionary in Estonia, ladies, uh, Apostle Joyce. Yeah, I'm uh, also in, in the body of Christ. I'm um, not more on the local church, but we work together for missions or out there, prophetic training, prophetic prayer watch, uh, prophetic school, whatever that uh, we are called to do, we are doing together. And our Malaysian pastors, our Singapore pastor, we work as a team, we meet together, we connect together through Zoom, and we continue to serve. So it is important that a team must develop strategies, uh, draw the plans, uh, they, they must have immediate uh, goals, projected goals, ultimate goals, all set, a foresight, uh, allocation of responsibilities, job description, each person. You know, if Pastor uh, Prophet uh, Patrick is more in the prophetic and the teaching, and the preaching and the prophetic ministry, then we would need someone who is, has got good uh, uh, gift in uh, uh, administration some teaching ministry, some uh, other managing, or, or some can give pastoral care. There's no two better than the other. We have a set man, and we all serve in different, different. We don't pull ranks. We, we serve the Lord. We have, so you see, three things. There must be object, objective, clear objectives, everyone. Number two, build strong relationships. There must be good, strong relationship with one another. Not everybody trying to connect with the pastor and be close to him. Oh, yeah, that's good. Be close to him. But what is your motive? So that you are special for him. So you have special uh, preferences. No. Pastor will love everyone. He, he's a, a prophet pastor. He loves everyone and ministers equally. Uh, but why we want to get closer, to get some rank, to get some a special no it should not be like that i think pastor's heart is uh, just to serve everyone the third thing is everyone serves the servant heart whether you are the main administrator you know we have seen people come and go why they became an administrator they knew a lot of secrets they know a lot of things so they thought they know everything uh, uh, and they know better than the pastor i mean you can be doing better in your place and he does better in his place. But he's the leader. He's the vision. And if you try to get out of your calling and your gifting and start doing things, I mean, you need to check ourselves. I served under my pastor 10 years. And I enjoyed serving. I loved to follow. I was sold out to what vision he had. And that's what Jesus also said. Jesus, from the age of 12, he was already ready for ministry. 
but from age of 12 to 30, sold out to his earthly father. Best carpenter, good carpentry, nothing else. After 30, then Paul, when you know how to follow, when you're sold out to your leader, when you're loyal to the leader, when you're submissive, when you're teachable, when you're committed, you take the vision as your vision and you lay down your life for that vision, then God will revive or resurrect your vision and your calling when the time comes. You know, as far as serving, the heart of serving, there's a story. This is a real story, but it's olden times in America when there was no cars, uh, no flights, you know, uh, there were only bullock carts where they carried the bricks. So the, this Anglican church wanted to build their church. So a lot of people donated. And so they start building. Uh, they have these bullock carts, cows, you know, taking uh, the bricks. So they all said at the end, when they finished the building, uh, they wanted to put the best giver's name on the front door. There was a lot of argument because some said, I paid the diamond, I gave the gold, I gave three, uh, so much money, so much. So there was a big uh, uh, argument. And the pastor said, look, every one of you gave. I know some, some gave according to their means. In order to find out who is the best giver, the best is God write the name. Let God write the name. Uh, decide who is the best. Because I cannot measure by amount. You, you may have more, that's so why you can give more. But the one who has less, they cannot give more like you. But God looks at the heart. So let God write the heart. Then suddenly next morning they came. There's a, there was a name, Ruth. Uh, we can call it Leah. There was a name called Leah. And everybody saying, who is Leah? Who is Leah? Yeah, never heard of the name Leah. And not even in the top list of the donors. Who is Leah? An old lady with a stick, backbone. She came. My name is Leah. Oh, what did he do? Leah said, look, I don't have money. And I want to contribute to my church. I want to give the best that I can. Then I look at the bullock cart. It was coming, the cows and the carts and the bricks whole day it was bringing and later it goes to the stable or where they, uh, they rest and then I realized that they need grass so whole day I went out there every day I went out there morning to eat, to cut grass tie it into bundles and come and put at stables so when the cows come back they have enough water they have all this grass for them to eat so I was happy serving him you see this person was not meant pleaser. This person had catched the vision to build the uh, church and wants to give the best. What can I do? What is my role? What is my capability? And here she said, my capability, I don't have money, but I, I see, oh, okay, grass, nobody's doing it. And uh, cows need grass. Nobody asked. Nobody even uh, found out who gave the grass. Nobody, nobody even know who, who did it but she was so excited to give it to jesus and do her best but you see the name came up there. so this is the kind of heart attitude that we need in the building our church vision so let me go fast because i need to finish so everyone everyone has opportunity to serve uh, uh, you become trustworthy if you are serving and uh, you we we want to create a climate where everyone cooperates to achieve the results. It, it takes everyone to, to give their best to make it happen. Develop strong relationship with one another so that we can work as a team. There need to be built relationship. Everyone should have a servant heart. You know, everyone has a desire to glorify, just like this lady, glorify Jesus. You cannot allow your leader to do all the work. He'll be washed out, burn out, He'll retire very fast. We don't want him to retire so fast. He's not your employee. Oh, are we paying him? Huh? You pay him. He could have got a good job outside and, and built a house for himself. He don't even have his own house. He, he, he could have done that for his family. He gave all to serve the Lord. 
He's not your employee. He's your God-given leader. And that's so important. So everyone has the opportunity to serve. And everyone to encourage each other. Everybody, you know, when we have seen the victory, we share testimonies. Uh, we go for a holiday together. When, when my church was, we were building the church building. Everybody contributed. So when the renovation was done, when we are moving in, uh, we elders all got together. We want to bless our church. And we'll go for a cruise, four day cruise, four day cruise, pay only 50%. The rest of the church paid because they served so much. They bless, they sacrifice. And so that in the cruise, we fellowship together, enjoy. We, we enjoyed serving, now we enjoy fellowship and holiday together. So it's uh, every leader must have uh, make things happen. You know, every person in the church must decide to make things happen, not just go by the flow. It's not going to happen, go by the flow. You cannot let things happen by itself. You have to make it happen, make it happen. So prayerfully generate great ideas, find great solutions to problems, must be innovative, our uh, young people on the youths, all they have very creative mind, out of the box approach, always trust God for new ways, foresight in planning, honesty, positive, teachable, committed, sold out to the vision. You see, between Aaron and Joshua, Aaron was a man pleaser. So when the people pushed him. Where's Moses? He's up in the mountain. He's not coming down. When is he going to come down? And they, he he became a man pleaser and they built a, a golden cup and start worshiping. Now where was Joshua? Joshua was at the feet of the mountain. Joshua was not only submissive to God. He not only catch the vision of, the, of Moses, but he was loyal to his leader. Submissive to him teachable, committed every job. He was sent a spy to spy the land. 12 spies went, 10 spies went, and he came with good report. He and Caleb. Why? Because the mind is filled with the vision of, the, of Moses. That's why they are not looking at the walls. They were not looking at the giants. They are not looking at the weapons, but they looked at the land with milk and honey. And they brought the fruit as a son, caught up with the vision. And that's why Moses laid hands on him to be the next man. Not Aaron, his older brother. His older brother played a role, but Joshua was more submissive, committed. And so this thing can happen. So uh, get used. Uh, wait, let me check. Okay. So in conclusion, Moses paid a price to carry the vision. His hands became weak because he was pushing it up alone. And here come the marketplace people, the working class people, representing poor, uh, representing the working class people, and then we had Aaron uh, representing the, the missionaries, the workers, uh, the other service people serving, the elders, the deacons, all coming together and lifting up, financially supporting in every way. And so we can see. Uh, the supportive role was towards the vision given to the church. You cannot say, uh, we want to have a better vision that is more flexible, more nice. No, no. Church doesn't operate. Jesus is the head of the church. The vision he gave to the church, to the leadership, that's what we have. Yes. I'm the same. Prophetic vision given to me and I was called into the office of prophet and you will be surprised. We didn't teach so much about the prophetic. But our ladies, our men, our pastors, our leaders, our, prophet, our deacons also prophetic. Sometimes our children are also prophetic. The younger ones. Because it is God's given. I die, the vision won't die. Why? Already rooted in all my leaders. And they are imparting it to the others. And I sacrifice my life. They don't, I even release it to them when the time came. I asked my senior pastor, Xavier, how is it now with you leading the church? Pastor, 
you took us to a certain level and from there we are taking you to the next level. So happy to hear that he has caught the vision. And our life as a leader, we become exemplary to others. We cannot allow our leader to suffer and try to do everything. We didn't employ him. God employed him. He's God-given leader. So we need to go. They're not perfect. They're also human beings. Also, if I'm wrong, I apologize. I humble myself. I repent. I change. If it's more serious offense, then I better step down. You know. So we must really appreciate our leader. So so uh, I want to pray at this time. I want to pray for those who want to really commit to this vision. I mean, there must be a full heart. I mean, if you go with a half heart, your input is always. But you go full heart, vision will flow, anointing will flow, revelation will flow, God will speak to you, God will bless your family, your children, your third, fourth generation will. Be. Why? Because you have caught a godly vision from your senior. And you have submitted only to you. It's an attitude of the heart. Loyalty to the vision, to a leader. And submissive to God-given vision. And playing the role. And serving in the area. You know, so. And so, I want to pray for those who are committing. Uh, making the commit. Secondly, I want to pray for those who need jobs. Maybe you're struggling for jobs. And those who are business failing because of COVID. School financiers, uh, habits you want to overcome, and those who are sick. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are making their commitment today, Lord, responding to your message that this is called to be a prophetic church with its other emphasis. And also, we want to catch the vision and we want to dedicate our life. We know that we are in the last days and that our church is going to be a prophetic church a tower, watchtower, and a voice to the nation. And so, Lord, we want to pray our role. Some will rise as prophets, some prophetic intercessors, some prophetic worshipers, and others in the administration, management, and different, different programs in the church that will fit in in this call. Lord, I pray as they commit, uh, uh, seal that commitment, Lord, in the blood of Jesus. Lord, I also want to pray for those people who are struggling with jobs, who are struggling with business or uh, school or trying to get into school or struggling with finances. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release your power. I pray, Holy Spirit, you are there. We declare and decree, Holy Spirit, start intervening in their lives. And Father, we pray that this, this season, in the next two weeks, they'll begin to see miracles. Lord, we pray that there will be such an activation in everybody's part that they will be able to hear the voice of God. They will be worshipped prophetically. They will begin to hear the voice of God that as a church will rise as a prophetic church. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling in their habits. I pray in the name of Jesus, we break the habits, we break those bondages, and we pray they set free, Lord. We pray for those who are sick today, Lord, whether mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, whatever their sickness is, we lay hands in the spirit right now. We release your healing, release your power, we release your mighty. Father, we thank you. Come with the whole church, Pastor uh, Patrick, Lear, and all the team leaders, commit them into your hand. We dedicate. We know they are entering a new season, which means change is going to be there and new challenges. Holy Spirit guide them. Release your blessing in Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much. It has been a great pleasure to serve in my dear friend, my dear brother, uh, Prophet Patrick Chandran, and my dear sister here, and all of you. Hope to see you all soon. God bless you.